Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Airliners Live. Hope you're all well. It's Martin and Andy. And we are joined today uh, by no other than Noel Phillips. Hello, good morning. Nice we to all be here. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all in all nice and clear. Just check that for me, mods. And um, yeah, Noel's down here today uh, for your own event, right, Noel, that you've got going on? It is, on. Do you yeah. want to tell us a bit about that? Well, we're hosting a bit of a charity event today um, at the Concord Hangar here um, in Manchester, and basically we're raising a bit of money for Aerobility, who um, are a fantastic charity helping um, disabled people get into learning to fly planes and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're raising a bit of money for them, a um, bit of a meet and greet with everybody as well, so people okay. are coming along to say hi and stuff. So um, Amazing, yeah. so that's like your yeah. viewers and it is. members? Or? Yeah, exactly, it's just view so viewers. So we did a um, we put them on Eventbrite some free tickets for everybody to come along and um, we've got like 250 people coming apparently nice. so um, it should be quite nice but so if anybody shows them. up so uh, we've got a few activities up here we've got a tombola and stuff and I'll be saying hello to everybody and doing some selfies and just all that sort of stuff and um, yeah um, and a bit of a charity auction as well we're doing so we've got okay. some amazing stuff that we um, have very generously been donated from some organisations like Plane Reclaimers and Doors to Manual and people like that so um, so we've got some amazing kit that we're giving away way as well as well selling I guess as part of the auction really in yep. aid of um, air ability so yeah it's and have you good. shared a link for people to donate to that today I or? haven't yet no, no we should do that really if shouldn't you, we that if you handy. want to uh, fire me the link on Facebook I'll get yeah. it to our mods and we'll share it in our chat totally as well. thank you okay. very much yeah. um, what we'll do um, folks as well I think today uh, any donations that come in, uh, we will send in to Noel's charity today as well um, during the uh, oh, during the show today. So that should raise Thank a little you. bit of money. Yeah. But it says messing around, doesn't it? Um, so if you want to support Noel's charity today, guys, then we can uh, we can do that for you. Um, but having a look around Manchester at the moment, we got Matt Smith on the camera, um, mod Matt, yeah. who's uh, stepped up to uh, bring you the feed today. So thank you to Matt for stepping in on the camera whilst me and Andy are here looking after uh, looking after things. So yeah, doing a great job. And they're on dual runway ops this morning. So they'll be using 2-3 left um, for departures. Now, when we go live on Sunday, obviously we see single runway ops. We're quite lucky to see that. Um, but that's only on Sundays they'll do that during the stream hours. Uh, on a Saturday, they'll just be on dual runway ops, which is awesome from the runway visitor park point of view because you can see the departures on one runway and the arrivals on the other one and you can see both runways in use from here whereas places like Southside and thing you know you, you kind of struggle to see the other runway and things so um it's a nice nice perspective i think and nice yep. to be here um yeah but big shout out to mod matt who's up on the camera today um uh, doing a 10 out of 10 job already and um for those of you who don't know who noel is I don't know where you've been, but if you don't know who Noel is, uh, do you want to just let everyone know, know what it is you do and uh, maybe a bit of history of your channel? And Yeah, totally. So, yeah, my, I'm Noel, basically, and I uh, I fly around the world on uh, different airlines, make videos about them and stick them on YouTube, and um, that's pretty much it. People, for some reason, enjoy watching them. Um, but, um, yeah, so um, I, I travel around and um, go to random places like across Africa and Russia and places like that and try and find all the little local airlines where I can and... Um, try them out and see what they're like and um yeah and have a bit of fun in the process i was gonna say it's, uh, <laughs> it kind of goes from what i've seen looking at your channel you kind of go from one extreme to the other in my opinion yeah, yeah. you're yeah. flying amazing beautiful <laughs> business class or you're doing trips around india on a sleeper bus yeah absolutely so that, and that's kind of the, what i enjoy doing i like the extremes of it you yeah. see and that's you know i like the fact that i can take a really crappy airline and just struggle for like six hours with my knees up around my neck like in a really <laughs> terrible airline and then got onto like an Emirates first class suite or something yeah. after that and it's like that kind of uh, extreme from one to the other I think is what I enjoy I don't know maybe. do you like one thing I've wondered <laughs> is do you say do a really rubbish few flights or few trips say on um, I, I'm going to keep coming back to the recent one of like say the the Indian sleeper train the Indian <laughs> sleeper bus and yeah. then once you've done that to get home, do you usually treat yourself with a really nice first class home with usually, a sort of reward? Yeah, usually at the end of the trip I try to go for like the best the best of the best that I can get if I can, you know. Yeah. Um, just because it's just nice and it's like it's kind of my carrot on a stick at the end of it, you know, for me to get through <laughs> the whole sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that sort of gets me through. And you know, through the trips as well I always end up staying in quite nice hotels because, you know, you you 
like this, you mentioned the sleeper bus I did, and yeah. I spent two days on this bus in India where I literally didn't get any sleep because it was just the worst experience. Um, and then I got off the bus, was like, right, let's get to a nice hotel and get some sleep. And then mm. it's, it's the only way you can get through it, really, to yeah. be honest, because it gives you that motivation. You just know, like, the second you get off this bus, you're going to be in a really nice hotel and it's going to be awesome. And um, yeah. yeah, that's it, because you, you, I guess. From, especially with uh, what you'd say would be your most popular videos, or obviously the videos where they're kind of a bit wacky or something that not everyone does. And yeah. I guess for that, it really must take it out of you, like going on those trips that probably most people would would consider to be a hell trip for them. <laughs> you know, it does. Somebody <coughs> said to me actually, one of my patreons, Debbie, she said to me, she says, you know what, you do the bit of the hol- everybody goes on holiday, and you do the bit of the holiday that everybody hates, the worst part of, of the holiday. <laughs> yeah. But that is all you do. You yeah. don't do any. Yeah. Nice so I was like, oh, you kind of got a point there, really. Yeah. Yeah. There's never a video where you're by the pool having a but drink. Know, yeah. If only, if only I could make money doing that, and I'd be sure yeah. I could be doing that instead. But yeah. One thing I thought about, and I don't know, I, I, you must have thought about it as well. You obviously go to all these different places, you stay in all these. Diff- have you ever thought of maybe a Noel Phillips second channel? but for hotel reviews because it would literally be free content because you're staying at the hotel staying anyway, anyway yeah. so while you're there you just do a quick room tour this is yeah. this is me in the in the beautiful Hilton and, and this is the facilities yeah, it's got yeah, yeah. and yeah. then while you're there you're two birds with one stone yeah like, that's, that's a good idea I do stay and, and the thing is I, again I stay in the nice hotels sometimes but every now and then I'll be on a trip and I'll be like I want to stay in the cruddiest hotel I can yeah. find because I know it's going to add something to that video if I do that yeah. um, such as like flying to I think, I can't remember where it was, I went to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, or something, some <laughs> random little town in Alabama in the States, and I stayed in, like, the worst motel that I could find, like, <laughs> literally, there's, like, there's, like, drug dealers outside the room and stuff, it's, like, that level of bad, I was, like, oh. Knocking on your window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it does add a bit of comedy sometimes. It's, it's one extreme or the other, again, it's, like, yeah. the really worst or the really best, so, yeah. It's, it is, it is, what it, I think it provides really good entertainment, and like you say, I guess, because um, I know you was on the uh, the podcast um, the other week, yeah. the Departure Land yeah. podcast. Big shout out to those guys. Um, and you were saying that um, your your trips. It, people ask why don't you do the holiday airlines and, and you were saying that it's the the wonky trips that really get the viewers in i think it is yeah i think it is and it's um a lot of people say this and say can't you not just fly ryanair and can you not just fly yeah. jet two or something and yeah okay I, I i fly on those airlines like, all the time i use them to position to where i need to be you know mm. i'm literally on um, EasyJet next week for instance um and um yeah i just find that it's kind of so run of the mill everybody tends mm. to know what it's like yeah. already and mm. um, there's no reason really for every, you know everybody who looks at the video go okay someone's flying on easy jet phone yeah. on easy jet never yeah. mind yeah. Uh, if you're doing an airline like that from my point of view, from a content perspective um it ha- there has to be a story behind it as to why you're doing that um for instance i did whiz air and i spent 48 hours on whiz air okay. because um <laughs> it was cheap and it was it, during covid at a time when um things were kind of opening up a little bit um and they basically got a network of flights that I could take that were actually still operating. So I was like, well, you know what, let's do a Wizz Air challenge and we'll spend 48 hours on Wizz Air and it made a good story. What, good what, what yeah. aircraft was it you were on? On that one, it was A320s, A321s. Okay, yeah. 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 Were, they, were, were they okay? Because I've never flown they're, on Wizz Air They're before. reasonable, yeah, they're reasonable. Yeah. Um, as low cost go, they're, they're not too bad actually. Yeah. Yeah, they're very, they are very no frills, they're sort of Ryanair level of no frills, mm-hmm. but yeah. um, they're, they're pretty decent in my experience. They're usually on time, quite new planes as well. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think they've got like Neos and stuff now as well haven't they so yeah. Um, yeah yeah you see them at Liverpool a lot and you don't see them here at Manchester sadly obviously there's a lot of low cost that's mm. already based here yeah that's uh, annoying for me actually because I mean, they used to fly from Doncaster they used to and I think they still do to a degree um, but very like two or three flights a week or something there wasn't a lot when I wanted to fly on them but they're, they're handy for me because if I'm heading over to Eastern Europe so like you in the days before um, the sad stuff that's going on there and used to go over to Ukraine quite a bit yeah. to fly on their planes Wizz Air were just like, an absolute godsend because yeah, you could just get, get a 20 quid flight from Luton and you're in um, <laughs> Kiev in a couple of hours you know it's so looking at Manchester um, we've got one of the uh, brand new Virgin Atlantic A350s pinging so this is quite a new uh, a new aircraft into Manchester for us looking at Manchester flights and um, what we get in and out of it would you say there's any that would really be something that you'd look forward to doing. I know we've got the Emirates 380, um, Virgin Atlantic going over to the States now in the 350. What would you say would be, if you could pick any sort of premium flight, 
to leave. Um, Virgin's A350 is amazing, by the way. Um, it is a really nice plane to fly on as well. It's gorgeous as well, isn't it? Have um, you flown up the front in uh, their top I have, Yeah, I did. Um, we did. Um, we flew to Atlanta at Christmas, actually, on their A350 from Heathrow. Um, Lovely. And it, yeah, it's a proper nice, proper nice. Um, like what was that called? Because we were looking at them seats just as a joke the other day, weren't we? What? Which uh, Virgin? The Virgin. They Atlantis. had different tiers, then there was a lot of different tiers you could choose from. Obviously, the, yeah. the, they call it top deck. Do they call it? Or it's upper, upper deck. Upper, upper class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Upper class. That's it. Upper yeah. class. But it's not. It's weird because it's not business class. And it's not first class. It's sort of a hybrid between the two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there's a reason they do that actually because um, a lot of um, so if they get a lot of celebrities and stuff flying on them and movie stars and stuff like that. And they, the thing is, they have it in their contracts that they must fly in the top tier of travel right yeah and if they fly on BA that means they've got to fly in first class which is going to cost like 20 grand to cross the Atlantic or something. Yeah. so Virgin have sort of raked in the market in that sort of area because they've got upper class which is slight, slightly better than business class but obviously they don't have a first class and it's the top cabin you can get on their yeah. flight so they um, yeah they do quite well in that sort of thing because uh, so. used to uh, are like opposites because Martin doesn't actually fly right. <laughs> yes uh, and we were trying to get him on a flight over to like the States or something or just to experience mm. A flight, you know, because the last flight you did was like, what, 10 uh, years ago? 10, no, it got longer than that. Was Probably it? 15, 20 years ago to wow. Egypt, yeah. Yeah, and um, we were looking at like a business class seats you could do, and actually, maybe, Noel, you might have some experience with this. We were looking at a British Airways shuttle service on a Brit on a uh, business class seat, but they're quite pricey, but it might be a good like entry to like business class <laughs> seats, right? <laughs> The, you mean like a domestic flight? With yeah, yeah they kind of just look the somewhere. seats to yeah. me, though. They just look the same as they the are, ones behind they them. Are, they are identical. And yeah. Identical? Yeah, well, they they literally are. The only the difference is they keep the middle seat free. And it's called Eurobiz. Um, and they it, effectively, you go most places in the world and you get an actual decent business class yeah. seat. In Europe, and BA, unfortunately, is one of them. Um, they, they're they just in the standard configuration and they move the curtain forward and back depending on how many rows they need ah, for business class, you see. Right. So that's why it's like that. Okay. Um, but, I mean, the service is decent on it. If I, I, I will fly business class from here to Heathrow, but only if I'm doing like a redemption and it's not costing me anything or yeah. if I'm connecting onto another flight maybe, um, it might be worth it. Because you... I mean, you don't really get the lounge these. I think they use a different lounge here now, but the BA lounge is shut here at Manchester now. Yeah. Um, the onboard service is pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and it, it amazes me how much they can get done in that short sort of 40-minute hop down to Heathrow from here. Because um, you get like a full meal service and there's an open bar and everything yeah. on there. So yeah. it's just like, it's, it's really good I, from that perspective. I yeah. love the approach into Heathrow as well, you know, the, the city and everything. Oh, it is on the two sevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. on a that nice day. Yeah. And at the end of, like for me, at the end of a big trip that I've done, if I sit on the right-hand side coming into Heathrow and you just see the whole of London just playing out in front of yeah, you as you yeah, come in, it's, yeah. like, it's wicked. Yeah. Mega, mega. What would you say, um, sort of from a premium experience, would be uh, an airline which you'd, you'd, you'd choose if you, could, if you could pick any of the airlines then? Well, it would all depend where I wanted to go to. Um, Qatar Airways is, in my opinion, the best um, in business class, at least. In terms um, of like service, and in terms the food of the service and, and the seat and everything else, that's consistently good. You know, yeah. um, is that across the aircraft? Because we get usually the Qatar uh, triple into Manchester. Yeah, sometimes a Dreamliner. Yeah, they are. I mean, they do have different seats. They've got the um, QR suite um, on some of the aircraft, so they. Um, which are, which are proper nice. So they're on some of the triple sevens, I think, and they, I think they are pushing them out to more planes. But even if you get one of the older aircraft that's got the one two one seated, and they're still pretty decent. Yeah, they're still really good. Um, well, there you go, no, there's the first arrival. You want to let everyone know what's coming in then? Matt's got it what on the screen. Yeah, there we go. Lofty A319, isn't it? Yeah, cool. It's in from Munich, from and that's uh, closely followed behind by Jet Two, ah. and uh, yeah, it might be quite. Funny to wonder if you've been to any of these places where they come from. I used to watch Bergerac on TV. That's I'm showing me a bit, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. There's a couple of approaches on the way in now. Again, a big shout out to Matt for for jumping on the camera today, guys, for the first hour while we're with Noel. Um, if you're just tuning in, uh, we've got a special guest Noel Phillips on the show today. A uh, fantastic aviation Hello. content vlogger on YouTube. Uh, Mods will share his links. If you don't know who Noel is, maybe you've not heard about his channel um, or you've not watched any of his content, then please make sure you follow the link, hit subscribe and uh, go and enjoy uh, the content, uh, guys. Definitely worth a check in. Um, just having a quick couple of seconds just to give you guys a bit of an update then. So just holding short of the runway for this arrival uh, is our Freebird Airlines Transalia, uh, A320. And just on the stands, we're waiting 
for an A350, which seems to have been pushed. So I think that's just being moved, to be honest. Um, and then uh, waiting to go uh, to Atlanta uh, will be our first heavy departure of the day, the Virgin Atlantic A330. We've seen the 350 nice. come in earlier, just before we were setting up, then with a huge spray. It actually was raining before the live show started today. Yeah. And the spray on the runway just looked epic. Uh, this Lufthansa is 25 years old, so... Get, getting a bit getting a bit on though, isn't it? But, but on. They do keep them for a long time, Lufthansa do, I've noticed. I've flown on I flew on one of their A320s that was delivered in like the late eighties once. But the thing is on board, they've kept them so in such impeccable condition yeah. on board you wouldn't even tell. Like it's a So you wouldn't know because obviously yeah, we're and looking at you, this, it's all but I guess they've put the seats oh, on. God, yeah. But if you get on board, it, they keep it in really good nick on board as well. It's re really nice, yeah. It's one thing they do really well, I think. Well there you go, so that that kind of, I mean, I guess the, the, the oldest aircraft we see coming in and out of here at the moment is the Jet 275s. Oh, yes. They're, yeah. they're starting to get on uh, a little bit, but um, they're great to see, and it's great to see an airline like Jet 2 just still operating them. Because um, for yeah. us plane spotters, you want the it's noise, awesome. you want the power. Even the old 300s, they still fly them out of Leeds, don't they? The old yeah. 737 300s. Well, we had a couple of diversions yeah. in, actually. I think um, it was from Leeds, wasn't it, Andy? When, when we had when we were over south side on the show mm. we had a couple of old 737s i think so coming yeah. In. oh yeah 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 seven threes yeah i remember them um i forget the reason for that but yeah leads sometimes their, their airfield closes uh staff shortages yeah. and things like that yeah it's in a bit of an exposed position where they are as well they've got quite a short runway and it's like up on the hill and everything isn't it so yeah it's um, a bit can be a bit hairy getting in and out of there sometimes and um one thing to touch on which i didn't know um until I watched the uh, Departure Lounge podcast, is I know you you must be into aviation because you, you make <laughs> all this aviation content, but you're actually quite an avid plane spotter as well back in the day, weren't you? I used to be, yeah, I used to be years ago. Ah. I don't have time for it these days. So yeah, were you doing photographs or were you taking regis? What was I, what? Well, I, I did a bit of both. I took regis for a long time. Oh. So, yeah, I right. did. I mean, the old JP Airline fleets and that and crossing them all off. Yeah, I did that for quite a few years. Um, he's kicking up some sprays, isn't he, that He is, isn't he? Um, yeah, so I did that for quite some time down at Birmingham because um, I used to work not far from Birmingham Airport, so a lot of my friends were all plane spotters as well. So we used to go down to Brom and, nice. and watch them all in there. The um, Pakistan 747-200 used to come in. That were nice. Mega. And Turkmenistan Airlines and all that sort of stuff. Um, Mega. So some amazing stuff in there, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, down at Heathrow quite a bit as well back in the day. So Myrtle Avenue crew, mm. you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Heathrow is amazing for spotting. Oh, it is good. good for spotting or for photography. We're yeah, not, we're not fond of it for video because you can't really see. There's not, yeah, much, yeah, exactly. There's not many places to get a decent view, is there? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Merkel Avenue is a great spot. It's amazing for photography, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and you were at um, a premiere in actually, and you get some uh, some awesome evening arrival shots from that premiere in. Yeah. Uh, what were they on? They would have been on two seven right arrivals of the evening. And obviously the sun setting in the west, you got like the head-on shot of the, the aircraft, oh, nice. golden hour, it was glorious. What is this going well, on? Well, there you go, here's another one of our older aircraft, oh, um, YK on the red, Maybe which YK. is why it's not on radar yet, because it's stealth uh, plane. <laughs> we call it the stealth plane, because for some reason, out of the two 7.6s we see here, this one doesn't show until yeah. it's uh, taken off. So we have OBYK and OBYF. OBYK is the one with the offset nose as well. And OBYK was uh, in the headlines the other day, <laughs> not for a good reason. <laughs> no. uh, was that Monday, I think it was? Yeah, it was Monday, where uh, she had a, an engine failure. Uh, yes, oh. so she circled around up north for uh, maybe two hours and then uh, came in and actually landed on 2-3 left, which is very rare for us. Um, single engine, but then uh, taxied down of its own accord and um, went back to stand Ooh, yeah. after, so... Um, she was up flying again like two days later so must have been not the, the biggest issue in the world and she's been flying since yeah uh, and here she is now OBYK sunshine off nice and early there we go we don't know where she's off to though it will appear on radar when she gets yeah. airborne you'll see that that'll be a Mediterranean flight with that runway length won't it it will yeah. um, just when panning Matt just zoom all the way out for us dude as well uh, if you're doing a big pan uh, just so it Yep. And people in the chat, welcome to the, well, a, not a bonus, but a new, not a new either, just a Saturday show that what we're doing. What this? This is just a one-off Saturday definitely show. definitely a bonus for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not Sunday, everyone. You've not uh, skipped a day. Now, here's one that divides our community, Noel. Mm. Is it a yay or nay for you on the new Brussels livery? 
Oh, it's basically Croatia Airlines over, isn't it? And they've <laughs> got a different name on it. Um, it's, it's just vacating yeah. 2 3 right now. I'm um, probably the best view you'll get of it, actually. So. Well, it's quite nice, actually. I like, I think the, I like the dots along the fuselage. I think it's a nice change from being just white. But yeah. It's almost like BMI's sold logo, isn't it? The, the font they're using yeah. for the Brussels. Yeah. yeah. It's just, um, I think it's such a big change from the old one. Yeah. And it's, and it's gone extremely minimal. Yeah. The other day, um, I saw on Facebook that they updated their Facebook display picture, and it was just a white background with the red dots on, and oh. everyone was kind of looking at it, and, and <laughs> they put a message about sort of, oh, it represents this about our brand and everything else, and it, I was thinking, well, it's, oh, actually, it's, just, some, it's just some red dots, <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> I mean, you can read into that as much as you like. There's a few, livery, uh, a few airlines that have done that, they've made new liveries and they've really divided people, obviously, another one we see a lot of here is Iceland Air, now, we'll get to the Iceland Air special <laughs> soon, I don't know if Noel will still be on on the stream at that point but we are we have a, an iceland air special 75 coming in today yeah Ooh. um you, you, you might have seen this so one though it's really nice um, um they usually come in i think before midday i think maybe even okay. around 11. i'll um, uh, just grab it off the radar i think it's yeah easier. but iceland air do have a new scheme on their uh 737 maxes and uh, they've divided people quite a lot haven't they yeah, I think I've seen that. I, I remember thinking that wasn't too bad. I thought you were going to say Condor for a minute when you were talking about terrible <laughs> new liveries, because that's yeah. just like, oh, that's the heck of a yeah, yeah. livery coming in. Uh, later, it's the it? Glacier one, actually. Oh, is it? The, okay. yeah. uh, 1150, that's coming in, so you'll be well we'll into be your event in there, by yeah. then. But Hopefully, if somebody turns up. We'll, oh, yeah. I mean, listen, we're <laughs> recording it all for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, get you, we'll get you a good clip yeah, of it. Yeah. Let's, um, just having a look down the approach, we've got a Lufthansa on the way in from Frankfurt. In Lufthansa's um, well, it's not really a new scheme anymore, but um, it's like the new era. The current the, scheme, I guess you call it. The current <laughs> scheme. And uh, on the taxi out, another heavy departure to kick the show off uh, is the Etihad Airways Dash 10 uh, Dreamliner. One of our favourite nice. liveries. Yeah, I like that one, actually. That's very yeah. smart indeed, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. And I think one thing we've noticed with these, because they do uh, this standard scheme, the Greenliner scheme, and the mm. Manchester City Blue scheme as well, now, leaving the football club to one side, <laughs> we would say that it doesn't seem to matter what colour they kind of go for with this. It looks no, it always excellent. looks nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Have I you like had Etihad. much experience with Etihad? I've flown on the Dash 10, actually. It was quite nice. Yeah, mm. it was quite reasonable. Um, yeah, in, in terms of a business class, it's pretty decent. It's certainly up there with Qatar Airways. But the issue with Etihad, I find, is that um, they use A320s an awful lot on okay. their flights across Asia and stuff. Oh, so nice. um, so I flew from Kathmandu. When I did my Nepal trip, I flew from Kathmandu to um, Abu Dhabi with them. And it was about a five-hour run on an A320. So you don't get, like, the flatbed seats or anything. Yeah. It's just a 2 2 standard A320. That's my only thing I'd say that lets them down a little bit. Yeah, yeah we've Whereas got a new airline here at Manchester Q8 that's currently yeah. operating about a six-hour flight on the 20 Neo. Oh, yeah. At the minute. I mean, which is a very nice A320 Neo, but it's not the same as flying on, like, a A330 or no. a 777 or something, is it? So no. have, you, have you flown on Q8s before? I did, yeah. I yeah. went on their 777. Um, ah, okay. Q8, yeah. They were quite good as well, actually. I believe, um, I believe there's a date in July where, someone in the chat might know, where they're switching from the 20, 20 Neo to the 330 here at Manchester. Oh, right, nice. Um, and they've just got the A330 Neo as well now. Um, they have, A330 yeah. 800, which yeah. is yeah. I think doing Frankfurt at the minute. For and them, um, yeah. a question from the chat that I've just picked out um, is... Um, have you flown on the Emirates A380? Now, that's probably the highlight of our shows here <laughs> at Manchester. So yeah. I assume you've been on that a few I times. I have, yeah, in, um, in economy and in business class. It's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. How, would you, nice. how would you rate economy then? Because I guess it's a really long flight, isn't it? I'd say Emirates are, as, as far as economy classes go, Emirates are pretty decent. Um, their business class is quite nice. It's very gaudy, very like gold plated, mm -hmm. everything, and mahogany. It's a bit sort of like, I don't know, boudoir. 70s boudoir <laughs> it's all you know laid out but it's, it's, it's nice though and they've got nice you know the business class is reasonable the first class is pretty sweet it's got like the big walls at the side of the seats and stuff yeah and obviously you've got like the full bathrooms with showers and stuff on there as well which is uh, quite that, cool. that's something else in it having a shower at 40, yeah definitely feet. and then they've got a tv in the bathroom as well which is even better so yeah. it's like yeah why would Did you they have do a window in the shower no they don't that's the only thing it's not a loo with a view it's yeah. right in the nose like above the cockpit so. <laughs> they, they should definitely put a window in the shower because like, who's going to see you up there I anyway. know it would be amazing just 
you imagine? Oh, yeah. So in the shower and you just got that, that epic view. Yeah, I'm not yeah. that be. That yeah. would be nice. Talking of Lou reviews, have you done the Lou review at the RVP yet? <laughs> no, not yet. We were considering it and we, th- we thought about putting a sign up on the door so this Lou has been reviewed by an old yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We never got around to that. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, so your event's in the hangar today. Yeah. Um, have you been on Alpha Charlie before? You had a look around? No, no. I'm hoping to do that like today, actually. So it should yes. be good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they've um, the RVP have very generously given us um, half the hangar today to um, do our event, so um, which is very nice of them. So thank you to the guys there. Um, and yeah, we're just going to look sort of under the engines at the back and having a few people. I don't quite know how many people are going to show up, but um, we hopefully get a few people there and raise a bit of money for charity Good. and just say hi to a few of you. Um, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So did you put the invite out to everyone, or was it just Patreon? they went to no, they went to everybody, everyone, okay, and they were you. sold out or sold out. There were free tickets, but they they all went within. 40 minutes so yeah, it was, uh, which was pretty cool so I, I don't know how many of those will turn up but it should be fun anyway regardless I've wow. seen quite a few people here already to come and say hello so yeah. um, have you got the family with you today as well yeah, we have the family so big up to Rach who's um, been literally been organising everything to do with this over the last few weeks she's been flat out um, and her mum and dad are helping with a few bits and bobs as well today Amazing. they've been doing a lot with it um, and the kids as well we're getting some child labour going today so good. that's good so they're nice running the tombola and stuff yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, we've agreed a flat rate of 20 quid for the day, so that works out quite yeah, nicely. And some so, Kentucky's yeah. on the way home. <laughs> yeah, I presume so. Yeah, I'm staying up here tonight, actually. They, oh, were, yeah. they were going home tonight, but yeah, I'm stopping a bit. I'm off to um, Scotland tomorrow, so... Uh, filming, or? So, yeah, yeah, so I'm up to Orkney. Okay. Uh, do the old um, inter-islands flights up there nice. tomorrow, so yeah, that should be fun. Are you doing that, uh, the shortest flight that's up there? I am, yeah, so <laughs> the West Strait to Papa West Strait, that's so it, yeah. Um, yeah, I've done it before, I did it like 2017, 2018 or so, I'd literally got like 10,000 subscribers at the time, so I'm not, <laughs> not many people have watched it, and it's a really cringe, cringy, horrible video, because um, <laughs> it's like one of the first ones I did actually on camera as well, so it's horrible, and I'm like, we're out of we, 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 When we go back and look at our old <laughs> plane, and it's like, Gosh, what oh, were we yeah. thinking? Yeah, exactly. At, at yeah. the time, you're like, this is the best thing. Like, oh, I'm, I know. So, I'm so happy about this. And then you look back, you're like, oh, what now, you, now you realise why nobody watched it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I guess on a, on a more general note then, because... Um, we're very fortunate to be in the position we're in with Airliners Live, and I guess you would you would say the same about your channel. Mm. Just just for people who may have their own YouTube channel, maybe it's quite small, or maybe they're really trying hard to get it going. What what piece of advice would you give to someone who's just just starting out with YouTube and, and really just wants to grow the channel organically? It's the hardest thing ever, I know, because trust me, I've been there. But it's that consistency, and that is literally all yeah. it comes down to. And it's consistently uploading, whether it be every week, every other week, or something. Them, but um, but keeping that consistency, keeping it exactly the same, so almost the same sort of content, but just repeating that over and over. And if that works, fine. If it doesn't, tweak it slightly. But the, and and see how that goes. But the, the consistency really is the main thing, yeah, and that's yeah. the hardest thing yeah. because it's so easy. Like my son at the minute, Sam bless him, he's trying to start a YouTube channel up, um, doing like tech reviews of old old mobile phones and stuff like that. Mm. And he's really struggling. And he's done a few videos. Nobody's watching them. Bless him. And he's like, he's getting so down hard with it and he's like I, I can't I don't want to do another one because no one's going to watch it and that's yeah. a totally acceptable way to feel because that's how you go at the beginning when you start yeah. you like no like one's watching it why, yeah, why yeah. am I doing this because no one's watching it um, but you just have to continue with that and it's it's the hardest thing really because you've got to effectively you're wasting time on it uh, you know and nobody's watching but that will eventually start rolling you're and building the catalogue exactly up. yeah exactly yeah. And I, I wouldn't change. I've considered before going back and getting rid of some of my really old videos, but I wouldn't change them because it's part of the history of the channel, you know, and it's yeah. always fun when somebody will randomly comments on a video from about 10 years ago and you're just <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's funny because on Facebook, we've we've um, obviously got lots of lots of clips on there. Um, and it's quite funny that when you when you look through the analytics of the month, if you really do scroll down to the very bottom, even some of the old clips are still generating bits and bobs of revenue here and there. You just think, yeah. how is that still circulating? Yeah, exactly. People are still watching them like all these years on. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, Matthew's saying, watch your son's channel. Let's give him a shout out. Get everybody signed up and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I'll, get, I'll, I'll find a link. I'll send, yeah. you, I'll send you the link we'll in a bit a link. to his channel and um, we'll get everybody signing up That's to great. his YouTube channel. Yeah. Let's get him. Let's yeah. get him he's, on, he's on TikTok as well. But he, um, he's, he's got his other passion, which is amazing. And I don't know how he does it, but he's, he's absolutely passionate about fire alarms. And oh, when right. he talks to me about fire alarms, it's how I imagine people look at me when I'm talking about planes. You know what I mean? That's exactly that. But uh, yeah, he's absolutely mad on them. And he's starting to build a little collection of fire alarms and oh, stuff at okay. home, so which is going to be great. So every now and again at two in the morning when he can't well, sleep, he sets one off. Does <laughs> but it? They're not rigged up at the minute, and, we, and he's like, "Oh, I want to get a board so that we can like rig them all up and get some sounders going and stuff." And I'm like, well, "Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. We'll just get, yeah. stick to the actual fire alarms for that." But yeah, it's he? his passion. He, he's, he? he's twelve. Yeah, so he's twelve. Okay, yeah, so it's not yeah. a bad profession, really, if he's exactly. really getting into that. And exactly, yeah. and it's, it is amazing for him to see him have that passion for something. I don't understand it in the slightest. <laughs> but Wayne saying, "Love a good fire alarm." Love a good fire alarm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He was going. It's not something you really think about. But I guess no. there's all different types, and I mean, what? That's it. He likes his. I think it's a simplex something. He likes. He was on a hotel last night. Going, oh, it's a simplex pull bar, isn't it? Oh, and then, and this one's obviously been pulled in the past because it's got a slightly different faceplate to the other one over there. Look, and it's wow. like, okay. It's like, wow, okay, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> See. Got I mean, at the end <laughs> of the worst day, things to get addicted to, isn't that's there? It. So, and, you he's, know. and he's obviously <laughs> encouraging him. To, well, you're encouraging him to to enjoy it. Wow. And if it's something yeah, he enjoys, absolutely. then just that's it. if he's being just creative with it. it, then just yeah, whatever. You know, we're not being funny. We sit here watching plates, don't we? And people well, are thinking it, about that's us, it. and it's that's it. <laughs> that's it. No, it's it's, it's awesome. Yeah, so there goes awesome. the Virgin 330 service. That's going to Atlanta. Um, have you ever flown on a Virgin 330, Nolan? I haven't, no. You know. And they're getting some Neos, actually, as well, mm, soon. 330 Neos, yeah, that'll be yeah, great. That's they'll be nice to see them, and I bet they'll bring them here as well. They will, um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But yeah, I love a Neo. Um, and I've never flown on their A330. Um, have you flown on Swiss 220 or any A220 with Pratt & Whitney's on it? Yeah, yeah, so I've been on the Swiss one. Um, Do you hear the howl? Inside yes. the aircraft, yes, you do, <laughs> you do, you do. When they when they spool up the engines, um, yeah. I was got some Wookies in the chat. Yeah, by the way, we'll show them all the emote that we've got just for that <laughs> awesome. sound. You can always hear them. It's like whale sounds, isn't it? it when is. they're yeah. out. Yeah, I remember I was in I was in Toronto um, last year, and I stayed in a hotel near the runway. And Air Canada have got loads of A220, so you sit there, and every now and then you can just go, ooh, okay, like, there we go. There's an A220 going out, yeah. is it? Yeah, we <laughs> love it. A nice pair of Wookies, we call. Yeah, them. yeah, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I do love I do love the two twenty. Yeah. I think I think to be honest, any aircraft that's loaded with Pratt and Whitney's, I definitely prefer. It's a flipping lovely plane to yeah. fly on. I was in a flight deck of one of them actually a few weeks ago, which was nice. Um, All right, got invited over in Tanzania. Air Tanzania have gone, and they um, very kindly got me up to ride on the jump seat for a sector over there. So, oh. uh, which was pretty cool, and you can hear the noise up there as well. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. funny, isn't yeah. it? Because you'd think um, you'd think from a um, I guess from an airport point of view. I'm sure there's probably something you can do with those engines to get rid of that noise. Mm. Yeah. And I just wonder what, yeah. what makes it and why it's necessary. I mean, from a plane spotter, I love it. It's great because well, a lot of modern aviation is so quiet now. Yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert in this. I've heard something about before about it being a, like a geared engine. Mm. And it's something to do with it being geared, whereas most of engines aren't or something. So I don't okay. know how that works in terms of the engine itself. But, yeah, it's... It's more like a car engine, I think, where it's geared between different gears to make it more efficient mm. and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's something to do with that, if I remember right, but I, it does sound cool. It is a, it's a great sound. I mean, just touching back on plane spotting, obviously, you used to plane spot back in the day. Yeah. Obviously, Manchester's got a lot quieter in, in recent years. We've lost the 747s. A lot of our A330 carriers have now moved over to newer aircraft as well or just, just stopped flying completely with us. I guess plane spotting is definitely getting a lot quieter and um, I guess as we see the more economical aircraft coming in as a plane spotter we're losing a bit of the magic there do you reckon? You know, I, 20 years ago, I had exactly the same discussion, um, and we were saying the same thing back then because the airlines were getting rid of the old like DC 10s and stuff like that, and the old yeah. 727s, and we're like, oh, it's never going to be the same again. And here we are, 20 years later, having exactly the same discussion, and we're talking about, oh, they're getting rid of the 737 classics, and they're getting rid of the 757s <laughs> yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's like it's it's going to continue like that, I think. I don't. It, it, it's weird how it's gone because we used to be petrified of the day when we would have nothing but 737 300s and 757s flying around and then now here we go they're, they're the rare ones they're the and, ones that we in, want now in 20 years time this A320 that's going right past us now that'll be the rare one you yeah, know yeah. everyone will show up to see a classic <laughs> to see A320. a classic A320 yeah exactly so I think 
it just evolves, doesn't it? Really, yeah. and, that, and that's not a bad thing, you know. Yeah. Um, have you got a favourite livery that you like to spot? By the way, is there any liveries that you really, really love? Maybe a favourite. So I, I do. Like I said the other day when I was on the Departure Land podcast, Royal Jordanian's livery is flipping amazing. Ooh. When it's new and when it's not all faded and nasty, it's, it's, it's <laughs> lovely. Um, and Azerbaijan's livery is an amazing mm. as well, especially on the old A three forty five hundred. I think they don't fly anymore, but they um, that, that just looks incredible on there. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. It? We almost got an and Azerbaijan A three forty five hundred. Blue it, was, it came in, and then at the last minute they changed it to a seven six seven. We're still hyped it's still about nice. it. Still nice. Yeah, yeah we were so like, smart. Oh, yeah. Would have been nice to see a three forty. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and any um, particular specials that you love? Any like, uh, obviously you got like the Iceland Air coming in today. You, you mentioned the Heckler Aurora as well. Yeah, that's is, that's a favourite. That yeah, one of mine. It's really nice. Um, the seven five as well. Yeah, and I like I like when they do the retro liveries as well. A lot of them. I are love quite them. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. I would say I would love to see a day where all air carriers just went back to retro liveries. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. don't think it would be a bad move because no, exactly. they all look so great. They do look yeah. amazing. Um, I was in. Um, I flew back the other week on um, MEA and they've got a retro livery over in um, Beirut that just looks absolutely stunning nice. um, and you don't I've, I've not very often seen it coming over here because they tend to send the A330s I think here but mm. um, yeah they've got a retro livery on that and it just looks proper nice looks it's, amazing. Just, it's always nice when you see a lineup of planes and then in the middle of them is like a like a proper retro livery you're like oh what's that and what's then it's that? just like yeah because the, the Qatar send I, mean, I know we were talking about the Condor livery I think off stream oh. which is uh, definitely yeah. a divide in, I'd say it's more of a negative for most people than a positive, but yeah. I'd say one sort of retro livery with stripes that's the, or a stripe or two that's done really well is the Qatar retro. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's just got the purple stripe all the way down the body. Um, it I've looks fantastic, doesn't yeah. it? The Qatar, see if I can I pull it up. Um, yeah, it was the yeah, Qatar yeah. retro, wasn't Qatar it? Qatar 777, yeah, retro. There it is. Uh, oh, wow. On a triple yeah. seven as well. On a triple. That, yeah, that's yeah. nice. So yeah. that, that's, that's it there. So that, that kind of. Oh, gosh, I'd say stripes, nice. stripes yeah. done well, would you say? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Compare it to the current livery as well. It's like it's miles away, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. isn't it? Which makes it stand out, yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. There's just so many retros that I think look better than the, the liveries yeah. that you're operating definitely, now. Definitely, definitely. I think Qatar is probably the worst for looking just dull. And I think the reason for that is it's not a dull livery. It's because yeah. it was designed to be in like deserts and very sunny environments. Yeah. And when it comes to Manchester, it's just always cloudy and dull. <laughs> it just doesn't stand out really. And it's like Scandinavian's old livery though, isn't it? I mean, even the current one to a certain degree, but mm, yeah. the, the old grey one. Yeah. I remember taking, trying to take photos of, the, of that one south side here. It was a nightmare because it just doesn't stand out and you can't yeah. get a nice yeah, yeah, photo yeah, yeah, of it yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it just looks so grey and bland. Um, have you flown on any Maxes yet? A uh, couple, yeah, a couple. Um, Aero Mexico, Norwegian. I did actually across the pond when they first came out. So yeah, yeah, yeah they're nice. They're nice to ride on actually, okay. and they've um, decked them out quite nicely. They've got the whole um, the modern Boeing like blue sky, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. going yeah. on down the cabin, which is pretty cool. Um, I'd say um, looking at them in windier weathers. Yeah, we seem to see when we're doing our shows that the Maxes seem to handle a bit rougher weather, a lot smoother than the standard 738s. They are incredibly smooth aircraft, they really are. Um, and like I say, my experiences with them has just been incredible. Everyone I've flown on, um, I think, I'm trying to think on which other airlines I flew on, I think I flew on a um, Blue Air one, actually. Um, mm. Air, well, Air Blue Air, Air Blue, the Romanian airline, I flew on them over to Bucharest, which was, it was it was filthy, but that was by the by, it was still a nice plane yeah. to mm. ride on, even as, in a low-cost config, it's, it's nice, you know. Yeah. And a message just coming from Mrs. Airlines Live, saying there's a lot of new people in the chat just asking who we've got on yes. with us today. So uh, we're very uh, fortunate to be joined by Noel Phillips today. He's got a, an event raising money at the runway visit apart today, and he's spending a quick hour with us at the top of today's show. Yeah. Uh, Noel Phillips, a fantastic aviation vlog content creator on YouTube. We'll be sharing his links in the chat. Um, and that kind of gives us a good opportunity to discuss uh, your second channel, um, which many people may not know about as it's quite new. Yeah, the, the pilot vlogs. So, um, yeah, I... Um well, I got my PPL um, back a couple of years ago. I originally got my PPL back in 2001, 2002, yeah, and then I ended up doing growing up things like getting a house and stuff, and then <laughs> I suddenly couldn't afford it anymore. And so that went well, didn't it? And then um, 20 years later, I'm sat there um, during COVID, actually thinking, oh, what's going to happen? Is my main channel going to die because I'm not going to be able to travel or anything? Mm, you know, it was very uncertain yeah. times, and I thought, you know what? I, I really want to start flying again. I've got a bit of time. Um, so I'll go and see if I can do my PPL again, yeah. thinking I needed to do a full PPL or whatever. 
and I rang a couple of schools up, and they're like, your, your PPL never runs out. It's literally, it's like an indefinite thing. Mm. Okay. You just have to renew the rating on it, so to get your single-engine piston rating back, which is effectively entails a few hours with an instructor, and then do a check. Okay, right. so you just like, go and do a ah. few flights, and then they just make sure you're all right. And Absolutely, yeah. So I did it in one day. I did it all in one day. I went over okay. to um, Santoft, um, which is just to the north of Doncaster, in it's gone to um, got in a uh, Cessna 172 with an instructor and he's like it literally just comes back to you straight away it's incredible yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like riding a bike yeah. and, I, and it's weird because after all these years I honestly thought I'd forgotten everything that I'd learned previously yeah. it was yeah. literally like that it was a black art to me and then he's like but you're like a lateral it's like you've never stopped I was like wow it's like you're just <laughs> it's ready incredible to go. Yeah. And, and so you take you do you rent planes you, I do you rent the planes yeah. and you just go all over the UK I do. so yeah I rent from Gamston now which is my like, local airfield up near yeah. Mansfield and um, I rent their PA28 and um, their Arrow as well the retractable undercarriage and um, fly yeah all around the UK just Amazing. making well, travelling around having a bit of fun and making videos as well and um I guess yeah, that's the other side of things that people may not see as well is, is another another avenue. I kind of find that with YouTube, if you're showing people something that they may not get to see themselves, that's where you really generate the interest. I guess being on board a, it is, a plane is... It is. And, and it, you know what? It's been so nice. The amount of people that have um, messaged me and said, you know what? I've just started my PPL because I've got been inspired by your um, yeah. channel. And it's like, wow. That's and it's good. like even, like every week, like one or two people will message me. And you think how many people are going to be doing the PPLs and actually getting mm. into flying yeah. and stuff as a result of this? It's really really cool to actually it's, yeah. it's not massively expensive either i used to be under the impression you have to be like a multi-millionaire to be able to get into this and obviously you say you rent a plane and some people have shares in planes yeah, yeah. some people even buy them outright and it's like all this isn't massive it's not uh, it, it, it's it's, it can't, it's expensive don't get me wrong yeah. i'm very lucky to be doing what i do mm. um but that said it's not as out of reach of people as people tend to think yeah that's, yeah. that's the thing it's yeah. like it, you can do that if you know a lot of people spend money on like motorbikes or doing up cars or yeah. things like that and if you can spare the sorts of money that you're talking it's yeah. probably a very similar amount to be able to fly a plane so it's yeah. Do you have yeah. any um, sort of progression goals with that personally for yourself, or do you just want to kind of keep it as just a nice pastime hobby? I do want to do more. I want to get my full instrument rating at some point when I can, because um, I'm on a restricted instrument rating at the minute, which means I can only do that in the UK. And I'd like to do my multi-engine at some point as well, yeah. um, which would be nice. Um, yeah. So, But then it sort of makes everything more expensive, I guess. But then you get everywhere a bit quicker, so it's like sort of balances itself yeah. out a little yeah. bit. But yeah. It must be hard um, for you to find the time to do these things as well it is what well, it is and it isn't I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate that the job i do doing this means that i'm flexible in the week mm -hmm. and i can say right this week i'm going to take a day off and go flying mm -hmm. yeah and i'm um, very lucky to be able to do that and then pull it in somewhere else you know so have you um been into our local at all with uh barton or have you got any plans to come to Barton? No, I haven't flown in there yet. Um, I am planning to be there very soon, actually. Um, I want to fly up. I want to fly in there at some point. Um, the trouble with Manchester is the airspace is an absolute nightmare to yeah, get around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I tend to give it a very wide berth, but um, I do want to fly into Barton at some point. And there is um, Doors to Manual, one of our event sponsors today. They are moving a 747 up there, actually, to they Barton. Are. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, they are. They, um, so I'm going to hopefully be up there to go and see that guy being put into well, place um, and stuff. We're so. actually going to be based there in the next couple nice. of weeks um, yes. and yeah. so um, if you're flying in give us a nudge and we'll we literally yeah. just walk out to the airfield and film you Come there you go the live uh, stream of a PA-28 landing on don't be bouncing it down there because we'll all see it I, yeah. I promise nothing yeah. <laughs> we were down at Barton on uh, what day was that one was it Thursday because it was our squash day and we were playing squash is what me and Martin do on Thursdays mm. now try and keep in shape shape try <laughs> yeah. um yeah to see the results from that <laughs> and um got a, didn't we get a notam from barton saying that yes. there was a, a merlin or oh, there was just military it was just military the, the, they said the notam said the field may be closed for circuits uh between half two and four due to military training wow. so um i sent a little email and just said i know you're probably not allowed to tell me but if you can give me any sort of idea what's going on <laughs> i'd really appreciate it and uh, fair play to the guys, uh, they let us know what was happening. And we said, yeah, we'd love to come down and film it. Uh, nice. Merlin helicopter yeah. comes in and uh, they take us right next to where it lands. It lands, we got some yeah. awesome footage of it landing. Yeah. And, huge wow, shout and it does a big flyby as well. Yeah, huge shout out to Chris as well from uh, Barton and Liam as well. Yes. Uh, Chris gave us a tour of like the, the heli center. He gave us a tour of the airfield, some of the hangars. 
Yeah, it's just they're a, so hospitable there, which is like another reason why Noel should visit because they are yeah. really hospitable and they'll get you on board and they'll show you around and they're, they're a great bunch Fantastic. of people who run Barton. And yeah. I believe it's quite close to a massive Greggs as well, so that's an <laughs> extra reason to go, isn't it? So you're in the right place if you want to go drive through Greggs as well. I think yeah. it was the first drive through Greggs. Maybe not mess around there, straight through lob sausage rolls through the window. Go. You don't even have to stop. Yeah. Didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's any KFCs around there, though, is there? Uh, no. Oh, that's all right. You, you can't. Yeah, it's got to be Greg's in Manchester. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's, there's a new video flying to Manchester for Greg's sausage rolls. There you go. Yeah. And uh, I'll I'll drive you to the Greg's if you want yeah. to have the, yeah, the cameo yeah. appearance. <laughs> yeah. What's there your you What's your go-to then? A sausage roll or a steak bake? Um, I like a sausage roll, but I do like the cheese and baked bean melt that they do. Good that's shout. It's nice. Yeah. Very good shout. Very yeah. good shot. And they used to do an amazing Mexican baguette there as well, actually, which used to be amazing. That was quite spicy, it wasn't was it? really spicy, but it was amazing, and they stopped doing it. So I don't know why, but we, we can't get them anymore where we are. So, <laughs> yeah. We only go to Greg's for one thing, and that's the yum-yums that they do there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're really good. They're probably the best yum-yums you'll find them. <laughs> so having a quick look. We've only got no for the next five minutes or so. So I reckon, guys, for the next uh, few minutes, if you want to get any questions in the chat... We'll do a quick, um, a quick fire. I've got I a few know questions. We've, uh, we've, also, we've not really read too much of the chat out guys and the reason for that is because we're actually recording all of this as well uh, so we'll be putting some content yeah. together for you guys so we wanted to kind of do this a bit more of a kind of a live podcast uh, which is why um, apologies we've not got to too many questions in the chat but if you want to get any in there and we'll try and grab some we've, out we've just been talking non-stop so if we were reading chat it would have been like yeah. even even in more chaos and uh, Paul is saying it wouldn't be <laughs> airliners live if we didn't have some sort of food chat <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, I mean yeah let's stay on the topic of food have you, have you been to the RVP cafe yet or have you ever mm. been there before we just had a really nice sausage cra- not, sorry not a sausage car but sausage Roll. Oh, bomb. Ah, yes. Oh, there bomb. Oh, you there we go. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, okay. I had to get it right. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, very nice. Then you yeah, very nice. Nice, nice sausage for me breakfast um, this morning, yes. <laughs> we, we are big fans, you may, may have heard on a stream, of the, the chips they do here. So oh, if, okay. if you ever want a snack good. or like Ooh, an nice. opportunity, get some chips. Yeah, that's at um, yeah. Esther saying, what's, the, uh, what's your best destination that you've been to? I guess um, we're talking about. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier, weren't we? Nepal is one of my favourites, to be fair. It's... Um, beautiful like the, literally you land in there the mountains are right up into the sky like you've never seen it's incredible like the video does nepal no justice whatsoever right. it's absolutely just t- it's to look amazing. around and just see surrounded by like mile high mountains yeah. it's just incredible yeah um, um yeah very nice uh I have one question i have was um your passport must get a lot of stamps, yeah. right? Does that, have you filled it up before? Have you ever had to get a second one, or what's? I am um, so I'm literally at the minute. We were having this discussion the other day because after I got back from Africa, right. um, every country you go to is a visa country, and that oh, takes wow. a, an entire page up just to, to stick like the sticker oh, in. Oh my gosh! So I've got a, a double size passport. That's my because uh, mm. you can order like a double size one that's got like 50 pages in it. Oh, right. right. And, okay. Um, I got it in December 2020, and it's just over half full now. <laughs> so I'm going to need to get. A second passport at some point and, and, al- and also for when I'm sending them off for visas and stuff because yeah. then it sends me means I can't oh, travel yeah. so, you can't, yeah. you've got to uh, get, get it in nice so, and early with the way yeah exactly so. people probably don't see that admin side of your, your work because <laughs> you, you probably do a lot of research a lot of planning a lot of booking yeah. a lot of logistics and that's like most of my job if I'm honest when, I'm not, when the, I'm not flying yeah that's, yeah. Um, that's um, a really good question that's just come in from Kev actually just saying what's the first thing you do when you get into your house after a long trip Ooh. Hug the kids. Um, that's the first thing. They generally come running out to the street, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, give them a hug. Go upstairs and get a shower, because Rachel won't come anywhere near me then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, generally, it's a chippy tea, and um, just chill out on the settee with a chippy tea. That's generally the uh, that's the order of things. Good, you know? good. Like, it's, it's like home. Like, everything you can do to be at home. Maybe stick only fools and horses on or something. Just like, yeah. really overdose just something. really like, get like, back to the British. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, What's the perfect pizza? That's something that we often get. I like a mighty meaty. I, oh. I do like that. Yeah. Um, all the different chicken and everything on it. And the tomato beef, base. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Um, quite a good question from Samantha, actually, saying, uh, does uh, Noel having kids affect travelling? And what's yes. your advice for parents wanting to travel? <laughs> That's uh, our Sam just to the side there. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, well, it's, you know, it's... 
See, uh, traveling with kids is a different thing. Uh, they don't travel with me typically on the trips, um, as you know. Um, it, I do miss them like so much when I'm away, and Rach as well, of course. Um, and yeah, it's it's much easier now than I imagine it would have been a few years ago because we've got FaceTime and stuff, so we can stay in touch that way. Um, but yeah, it does definitely make me like crave for home a little bit more mm. while I'm away. That's the only thing. Um, but traveling with the kids as well, it's you know, they're very good. They've been quite used to traveling on planes from a young age, really. Um, so they're pretty decent travelers, really. Sam, like Sam's first trip on a plane was to Australia when he was like 18 months old. Wow. Went to Perth. So that <laughs> okay. was uh, thrown in the deep end then. So um, How was that, like being just 18 months? It w- There was tough bits there were tough bits yeah um but for the most part it was really good and it was we were on emirates and their cabin crew were just fantastic you know oh, yeah. to the point where they were taking him off to change him and stuff and we were like you, oh, don't, wow. you don't need to do this like literally wow. they're like no 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 we do it and it's like as if the cabin crew would do exactly. that exactly i know awesome. it, isn't, yeah. isn't that That's incredible that they were doing that isn't you know we, yeah. didn't, uh, we didn't need any of that you know yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah they were offering and it was Amazing. like wow um incredible and um yeah so they're very good travelers the only issue we have is that we fly a little bit more in business class now because I end up filming it for the channel yeah. and I'm like and I keep saying to Sam you're just going to become a time mate when you get like 17, 18 you want to get on a plane to somewhere you ain't going to be in business <laughs> class mate you better get <laughs> like, oh, no, no, it'll be fine it'll be fine I'm thinking mm, you're saying yeah. that now yeah. but you're, you're not getting gonna be- a really nice bit but you don't know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah absolutely That's I think uh, yeah. Lloyd kind of touches on something so I'm just going to slightly adapt uh, Lloyd's question just a little bit I hope you don't mind yeah, uh, Lloyd uh, what would be the most expensive and the least expensive flight that you've done? Uh, so the least expensive flight I've done cost me one pence each way. <laughs> so I can tell you that one. Uh, that was Ryanair, of course. Um, they, had a, they had an offer on many years ago, and they were they were paying all the taxes for a period of time. And huh. they asked, we flew to Cork from East Midlands on Ryanair, and that was one p each each way. So it was two pence return. <laughs> so that was good. Um, so that was yeah. so that's my cheapest fare. The most expensive one. Um, Probably, and it wasn't anything particularly special either. I mean, I, sp- I suppose Emirates first class was quite expensive. That was like mm. four grand return to like, uh, where was it to? Um, Kuala Lumpur, I think. Yeah. Uh, to do, it was like four grand return. That was that Ooh. was expensive. Um, even for me, that's more than I'd usually pay. But compared to the usual fare, yeah. Um, it was like an error fare or something. So it was like a third of the price or something. So that's yeah. why. We and you're that. always like looking for those deals. I assume. Absolutely. To make video. Yeah. Um, but actually, the most expensive one I've paid, I think, on a cost per mile basis this was in Africa um, a few years ago and I wanted to fly from um, Nairobi to Kilimanjaro because I'd got the rest of my trip coming up after that and they emailed me like a week out and said um, you're the only person on the plane so unless we get another four passengers we're not going to send the plane and I'm like but literally I've got like an entire trip based around me being on this flight on this day Um, and they're like well you can do it but you're just going to have to pay for like the four extra tickets and I was like oh my goodness and it yeah ended up it costed me something stupid like about 1500 quid for like a one hour flight or something on a Cessna caravan it wasn't even that great but it it was great it was effectively a private jet wasn't it for that price (laughs) which wasn't too bad but yeah I I had to because without that then everything else would have just collapsed and then yeah exactly I guess another question we had uh, for our Q&A was if you could have any job airside what would it be? I want to be the guy that drives a little pushback truck. That was that, that was, was your right answer. Yeah, I've yeah, always yeah. wanted yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looks really cool, doesn't it? That, yeah. That'd be a good video, like, if you could, like, sort something out. Do you reckon out. they'd let me? <laughs> yeah, mate. Just, just <laughs> go in and say, <laughs> look, you know who I am? <laughs> hey, I, I, used to, I used to tow a caravan many years ago, so it can't be much different, right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, you're in Manchester. You offer someone a sausage roll. I'm sure they'll uh, <laughs> do anything. Like <laughs> there I think um, we are running out of time with Noel, which is... I'm uh, going to have to shoot. In a minute, yeah, shame, yes. people might be turning up, but if nobody turns up, I'll be back. So, when we but no, mate, second. I uh, <laughs> appreciate you taking the time to do no this with us. You're all. more Thank than welcome to, to come back anytime. And obviously, again, if you are at Barton, um, then please totally. let us know because we'll be there. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, we'll do. What time's the event on till today? Uh, till four o'clock today. Four. So, so, we finished about half one. We do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, come, come on down afterwards, yeah, absolutely. We'll have some photos and videos of it and have a look around. Definitely, definitely amazing. And then, um, drop me a message as well. We'll get a donation put in for your charity stream from today's stream as well. Definitely, yeah, we'll get that sent over. And, uh, and I'm curious with the chat, right? If you're watching in the chat and you watch Noel on YouTube or Facebook or Reddit or any other platform or you subscribe to him, 
Can we get a yay in the chat? I'm just curious about numbers as well. <laughs> yeah. Just to see what this that crossover be, uh, is. Might, might get three, maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you might be surprised, mate. Yeah, it'll take a second to get through. But yeah. Um, but yeah, appreciate it. Do you want to give one last shout out to Nova uh, as, as, as like your event here or you what you do and just send yeah, people over so, to your channel? Um, yeah, well, thanks for having me here. That's um, ideal. I spend this easy jet moves out of my way. Um, with yeah. The noise, but, um, yeah I, so yeah, my aviation videos and stuff. So give me a follow if you're interested in that sort of stuff on um, um, YouTube. Noel Phillips is my name. Just give me a search and I'm on there and you can see me whinging my way around the world um, yeah. on different airlines um, and yeah the event here as well of course if you're down here um, Airability we're doing it in Adolf today raising a bit of money for them fantastic charity go check them out I'll send you the link yep. if you yep. could but yeah very kindly put that in and they um, yeah help um, disabled people learn to fly and um, just check out the work that they do online it's absolutely inspiring some of the stuff they do with like Great. kids and stuff like that as well so Amazing. it's really really cool so Good. yeah appreciate it Noel thanks for joining thank us you. today yeah, yeah, thank you for we'll let me. you uh, get back to your event mate <laughs> and uh...